Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Dave TV. How you doing? Hi. Hi. It's the uh, it's Saturday. Saturday, the 10th of November, 2012. Finally getting the year right. It's November. I'm finally, finally saying 2012 instead of 2011. Takes a while, but I eventually do learn. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Once a year or so, I get killer batch of cold sores. I don't know why. I think it was probably the stress. The stress of the, the election, ooh, and the stress of the hurricane. Ooh. I usually tend to get them in the fall or winter when I get stressed out. And I get these nasty ones. They're like the size of, you know, they're like big blistery things in the back of my tongue, in the back of my mouth, back by my wisdom teeth. And they hurt. Not too bad this year, but I do have a nasty one right on the back of my tongue. It's like, it makes it kind of hard to talk. And um, sometimes, you know, when I eat like salty stuff, if something has salt in it, it goes back there. Ah! <laughs> if I just keep my mouth shut, I'm fine. Uh, so what's going on, everybody? Um, hey, I'm still waiting for two corrections in the Washington Post. Two of them. I pointed them out here, and I know I know all those folks read the, my website. Uh, Paul Fari a couple weeks ago is talking about uh, campaign ads on local radio or TV stations, and he called. He said that Channel Four was an affiliate of NBC, and he said that Channel Five was an affiliate of Fox, and of course both of those stations are owned by their respective networks. So how could you be an affiliate of a network that owns you? You can't. And of course, they you know they could have they they ran the silliest corrections in there. Well, I'm still waiting on that one. You know, affiliate means one company owns the station and it's connected to you know a network owned by another company. But you know the post, no, they know. Um, and the other correction was for that election coverage section on what was that the, uh, Thursday. That set, or was it Wednesday? Thursday. It was Wednesday's, Wednesday's election. One of those, that big election 2012 section that came out. And it said that Virginia's congress, congressional delegation in the House of Representatives remained with an 8 to 2 Republican majority when it's actually a 7 to 3 Republican majority. But, you know, hey, it's just news. And it's just you know, Virginia, which the Post ought to know that. They cut, you know, they, there's, Sitting right here in Virginia, practically. Uh, let's count them. Style, this great style section. Let's see how many articles are in the style section on Saturday. One, uh, two, three, four, five, five. Violin dealer sentenced in Vienna. That's Vienna, Austria, criminal court. That's exciting news. They should put that on the front page of the... Section. More rumors that Marcus Broccoli, <laughs> Brouchley, <laughs> Broccoli, is uh, on the way up. A lot of rumors that uh, he's the executive editor at the Post. He's the guy who's basically responsible for the paper's downfall. <laughs> he's kind of turned it into this kind of lump of mediocre, kind of Wall Street journalish kind of. Ugh. It, you know. Every year it loses about 10% of its subscribers. Hey, he's just doing good. <laughs> so the rumor is he's going to go bye-bye. Uh, I hear they're going to start having seances over there at the Post. Uh, Catherine Graham, you try to channel her. And, Catherine, Catherine, tell us, what should we do? What should we do? <laughs> you know, obviously the DNA didn't uh, pass to her. What is it? Tina... I would call her Tina Weymouth, Catherine, Catherine Weymouth, the Weymouth chick who's um, the, the newspaper's publisher. She's like the the granddaughter or the grandniece or the whatever of Catherine Graham. And I guess the Post figured her DNA would somehow save the day that because she was related to Catherine Graham that somehow she would know what to do. So she collects this high salary and she's also sitting there watching the paper go into the, uh, into the ditch. Sad. Um, I don't know. I think, 
I think the post ought to become more like the ex the Express, that little uh, freebie tab that comes out every weekday. They ought to go to a tab format, lots of color, better design, shorter stories, you know, fatten the thing up a bit. But, uh, you know, make it a quick read, none of these long, boring pieces, nothing about violin court cases in Austria. <laughs> lots of media news, media news, local, 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 live, late breaking and local. That's what I think. <laughs> but then, what do I know? <laughs> okay, folks. Um, <laughs> hey, this is funny. Channel 7 launches an alarm clock app. If you have an iPhone, you can download this thing. You can start your day with local news, weather, and traffic conditions, plus personalized alarm clock greetings from ABC personalities, including Allison Starling, Sine Simpson, Jackie Jarris, Leon Harris, and Steve Chenery. Leon Harris, hey, time to get up, time to get up. <laughs> uh, and also the big news we broke yesterday, um, remember Call for Action, you know, that Shirley Rooker thing you hear on WTOB all the time where they give you consumer advice, you know, um, don't put your social security number, you know, in, in emails and stuff like that, you know, all this nasty stuff that will get you screwed. Well, they're moving, going from WTOP over to WUSA Channel 9. So starting mid-November, Shirley Rooker and her crew, Call for Action, will be on Channel 9. I noticed one of the things Channel 9 is doing lately, it seems to be getting more and more into that consumer kind of newsy thing, with that Russ Potasic, whatever his name is, doing the, I like that. That's my favorite thing. I think Channel 9, that's all their news should be, is him going into restaurants, but finding mouse feces under the under the under the ovens and closing them down and <clears throat> what was it uh, McDonald's. I don't know if this was him or somebody else but a McDonald's that was storing its hamburger buns in the restroom <laughs> uh, also lots of rumors Mike O'Mara returning to local radio you know there's a local radio guy that I chat with a lot and um, he was wondering what to do on evenings on his radio station and I said you know or mornings and I said Don and Mike, I said, bring one of the, bring them back, bring them both back, bring one of them back, put them on the air. I think they'll do well for you. So, um, <laughs> is he talking to Mike O'Mara? Uh, I hope so, because I think Mike would be great back on the radio. Um, it's not, it's not a major station in the market, the one I'm hearing, uh, you know, but it's, it'll get some good coverage, and I think it would be a great thing for Mike O'Mara to get back on the radio and, and, uh. I think, you know, I miss him. You know, I miss Don and Mike. I, I feuded with Don for many years. You know, he really got mad at me. He, somebody would post something in the mailbag, and then he'd get on a show and personally blame me for writing it. Like, I wrote it. <laughs> of course, I do that. You know, I don't have any, DCRDB has no visitors. I write everything. That mailbag, it's all me. I write everything. I'm crazy. I just sit there and churn out <laughs> emails under different aliases all day long. It's just me. So anyhow, Don was furious at me for writing all those nasty messages about it. And there was a lot of good stuff. I mean, people love Don and Mike. Also, it's going to be a reunion. Um, Monday, I guess that is, right? Uh, Monday the 12th at 5 p.m. If you worked at the old W Light. Remember W Light, WLTT 94.7 uh, <clears throat> back in the, the pre-Aero days when they were classic rock? W Light, very popular station back in the 80s um, and 90s. I guess they were there in the early 90s. Um, Beverly Fox, who used to be on the air. She's, uh, I guess, organizing this, so contact her. I have her email up on dcrtbbfox at wtup.com for more info. So that's going to be 12, November 12th, Monday, Veterans Day, 5 p.m. at the Clydes and Chevy Chase. So uh, be there if you work there. Um, I remember them. They used to be, yeah, they were out at that Rockville studio back, uh, back up there, right off of, uh, Rockville Pike there, wasn't that? Yeah, down, down there in, uh, the southern reaches of Rockville. So, uh, the good old W Light. Cool old, cool old station there. Okay. Okay. Oh, interesting listening to, uh, Larry O'Connor there his first couple days as official, officially as a morning co-host at WMAL. He seems to kind of be a big presence on the station, <laughs> really overshadowing Brian Wilson, which ain't necessarily a bad thing. <sighs> uh, 
<laughs> All right, folks, got to keep it relatively short today. Thanks for watching Dave TV for this Saturday, the um, the 11th, the, the 10th, the 10th. Um, don't forget, November. November is a notoriously slow month for advertising and um, donations here at DCR TV. It is. People are focused on Thanksgiving and Christmas, and, you know, they're not buying ads. They're not, they're not, they're not making donations. So do take a few minutes, take a minute or two, send us a few bucks here at DCR TV. It's really simple to do. Go to paypal.com and then you just send money to my DCR TV at Hotmail address or my DCR TV at DCR TV.com address. And you know, a couple bucks, 15 bucks, 15,000 bucks, whatever you like. <laughs> um, that would really help. <clears throat> Appreciate it very much. Appreciate it. You can also send us a check. Just click on that support link at the top of DCR TV page there and you can get the address and, and all, all the stats. You know, we're an independent site. We don't have anybody like Media Bistro or Gawker or the Washington Post or, you know, some giant company to uh, back us up. We're independent. This is it. This is it. See what? See that? That's, that's, this is the DCR TV World Headquarters. And uh, in that other room there is... Uh, Piles and piles of big archives over there. <laughs> okay, folks, thanks for watching Dave TV for this Saturday. Have a great one. Uh, Bookum Dano.